I quit uh, journalism altogether and decided that I would uh, write novels, write a novel. Uh, and in the meantime, I would support myself by uh, uh, normal work. Well, you try that shit. Boy, I couldn't get hired. <laughs> I, 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 Back to the Tim Leary issue, is there any significance to the fact that you two wear identical shoes? <laughs> hey, Tim Leary does not wear these shoes. He wears, uh, are you serious? I'm serious. Hey, I, I, just, I just saw Tim Leary in New York last week. He was wearing uh, Italian Gucci's or something. What do you mean? About a month ago, he was here doing what you're doing, and he was wearing identical tennis shoes. Oh. So I wonder if it's like they gave to you when you came here. Gave? Leave to me? <laughs> I've worn these shoes since I was 13 years old. <laughs> yeah, I started buying with when they called 895. If Tim Leary's wearing these shoes now, he's copying me. <laughs> and he, it'll do the kind of uh, suits. What, what else would he wear? A gray suit, right? Well, come on. Uh, I know, Tim, uh, I, he's not identified. I've never seen him wearing these shoes. If, he, if, he's, uh, if he's wearing a little suit. Yeah, that's what it was. He's, uh, he got it for me. They probably my shoes, in fact. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm at a point now where I might, I, I probably should run for president because I'm, well, I can, uh, <laughs> I don't want to, but I, it may, uh, it may be, uh, uh, it may be sort of a mandate because I, uh, I have admitted all my crimes <laughs> and been paid for them and, uh, and somebody justified them. But here, what Joe Biden uh, gets knocked out of the race for uh, cheating on a law school exam? Lawyer is God. And uh, what a cheap thing, you know, a bunch of people. Uh, Biden's thing, you know, cheating on a law school exam, you shouldn't be thrown out of, uh, for that, for, uh, for cheating, but you should probably be punished for going to law school at all. <laughs> You have to be responsible for whatever you put in your body. Now, if I come here and stab you with it or drop you with a bunch of acid, uh, well, probably you're still responsible, but you, you shouldn't be around me. So, uh, <laughs> no, I, I don't. Uh, I don't think it's. Uh, I'm, I'm a advocate of uh, whatever you want to do. If you want to carry a gun, you have to, you know, be careful about that. If you shoot somebody, uh, you should go to prison, like uh, Getz should have gone. Uh, we have a responsibility to all of each other. If we're going to do nutty things like drive cars, uh, you know, uh, with a head full of acid, yeah, you better be careful. Don't hit anybody. <laughs> and if you do, you should be put in prison. Yeah, that, that's no defense. Well, yeah, whiskey's no defense. Cocaine's no defense. Uh, none of it is. They might get Secord. They might put him in prison somewhere. But uh, George Bush should go to prison for that. George Bush, uh, if, he, if he didn't know about it, he shouldn't be vice president. And if you didn't know about it, you should go to prison. You'd be doing push-ups at Eglin Air Force Base. <laughs> well, they, they put Gordon Liddy in prison for three years. Uh, and all he did was, uh, what, rob a uh, hotel room. Uh, no, Gordon Liddy never sold uh, bombs to the uh, Iranians who, uh, they, who killed 269 goddamn the U.S. Marines with the uh, explosives that, uh, that the U.S. Uh, sold to them. Uh, Liddy never killed anybody. Uh, well, I mean, maybe he did, but he didn't kill him in, in lots. Uh, yeah, he volunteered to, but, uh, you know, the, the, the arms sales to Iran uh, resulted in the murder of, uh, I don't know how many people. Well, George Bush. And, uh, well, what the, what's the vice president for? Well, he says, my job is, uh, he goes to funerals. You die, I fly. <laughs> That's a quote. It's a quote. I didn't, uh, George said that. Uh, like, you don't, we don't know, really, who, who the villains are, do we, in the White House now? They keep changing and turning. Only me is remains. <laughs> yeah. What, really, that's true. What they, what they learned after Nixon was, uh, like Agnew was a little bit too showy about having, uh, people bring brown bags full of hundred dollar bills into the, uh, <laughs> the office. Yeah, you know, and Nixon, uh, really was a little bit off the edge when he would get drunk at night, uh, and, uh, you know, the butler had to restrain him with his hand around his neck. He was going out and talking to people on the lawn, and, uh, these were wild people, you know, Nixon would, and Kissinger, would, they would screech at the portraits of, uh, Abe Lincoln, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, there 
there's a uh, there was some style there. Uh, they were. <laughs> My opinions have never changed really about the American dream. I just find more and more examples. And I'm always shocked, always. I really, uh, I'm naive about things. And I do have some kind of stupid, childish, hillbilly faith. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't believe in God or, uh, the flag or, uh, the president. Uh, or, you know, almost anything else that, uh, the official symbols. But I, uh, I think Thomas Jefferson was right in that uh, uh, we really have to take care of ourselves and be, if we don't understand and participate in our system, uh, if we don't vote and take care of that and pay attention, then somebody else is going to do it. A vote is like a dollar bill. If you don't use it, somebody will. And I think Jerry Garcia. Uh, yeah. and it's, uh, there's some people who are just good people in the... If this were a Buddhist uh, nation, they would know in their hearts that they, they, they would come back in a very high form. Uh, you can't one of those. Uh, he might write a Nobel, or you know, some kind of prize winning novel, but it doesn't matter that much to him. Uh, it's just fun to, uh, Ken is maybe one of the best people uh, in the world to just fill a day with. You know, to go, I last time I was up there uh, in the uh, Oregon, I remember the places. We went to the American Legion Hall and drank beer all day. And I, uh, I gave him a present, a bomb. And, uh, he was with Ken Babs, an old friend, uh, from down in La Honda. And, uh, we had a good time. We drank for hours in the Legion Hall. And, uh, you know, uh, you know all, you know, friendly, uh, I had to go back and work or do something. They had to go home, uh, to the ranch. And as, uh, they drove off, uh, Babs was driving and Kesey was in the right seat. And I was still saying, uh, hi, I'll see you later. And fucking Kesey threw this bomb at him. <laughs> it blew up right in the, uh, in my feet. <laughs> Almost took my, uh, knees up. Uh, I don't know, I appreciate that. <laughs> Probably have nothing. I've been stomped a lot. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think probably taking them down to Keezy's uh, and putting the angels together with uh, Keezy and that group in the Honda and Asik. <laughs> yeah, and that, well, memorable. Yeah, I'll tell you that memorable. <laughs> I had, uh, I've been around Asik since, uh, 1960, uh, then a big sir with Mike Murphy and, uh, Joe Adams, the original experimenters with, uh, and they, these were my friends and I knew they were smart. And they, uh, you know, they thought I was. But they were fooling with the acid and, uh, I've never had anything against any drug. I'll try anything, usually. Mm-hmm. But, uh, they convinced me that I was too violent in my nature, too weird to, uh, to fool with acid. You know, uh, it was too delicate. That was always Tim Larry's thing. They just have a, you know, a shepherd, a, a keeper, a guide. Well, it's, uh, well, I believe it for a while. For years, in fact. I, uh, I didn't, uh, eat acid because, uh, the gurus had convinced me that, uh, there was some part of my soul that would, uh, like some black bubble, you know, come up and <laughs> engulf both me and anyone around me. I was a violent person, you know, it was, uh, it was me in my soul. Dangerous. Well, when I took the angels down, Burger, Tony Burger, uh, the whole bunch, Terry, Danny, bad people, uh, down to, uh, I didn't mean to do this really, it was Keezy's fault. He wanted to, uh, talk to him. So I thought, well, shit, uh, you know, I'll bring him around. We went then to trade some records out of the, uh, the box shop, uh, and Hell's Angels, uh, Kind of a transmission place out in South San Francisco. And they got along fine. Wonderful. Then I, uh, introduced the Hells Angels to Bob Dylan. You know, they, they listened with rapt attention. Saying, let's go get him. Wayne's wonderful. Who is this? Where is he? Let's go get him. We're gonna find guy. You know, and, uh, uh, they, they really, uh, they're sort of like magic. 
So Keith, he had the same effect on them. And it was like bringing a hundred bishops, thugs, into a compound full of 200, uh, then beyond, yep, the, uh, sort of, uh, society acid freaks from Stanford, uh, really have on guard, uh, people from the Stanford, uh, degree of writing, uh, uh, school or report, where Keith had been. These were people who were in a, like, the same people who are fooling now with uh, these designer drugs. Yeah, he gets them. He gets very weird now. Uh, but the, uh, the people complain about well, these designer drugs and they weren't good. Uh, you know, I tried one yesterday; it wasn't right. And then, of course, I, uh, my wife went crazy and disappeared. Uh, well, designer drugs is just what it says, you know. And uh, you know, you're playing around. It's like mixing up bones. And. Uh, Acid was the same way. You never knew what was going to happen, but Keezy, uh, had a lot of acid. And I still wasn't, uh, I'd been down there a lot watching his movie. He had a movie that they had finally cut to 36 hours. And that was, that was as, as tight as it could get. He wouldn't cut it anymore. <laughs> yeah, he, I mean, Keezy spent, uh, thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars in this movie. Which was an acid trip. So, uh, and we would just stand and watch it, uh, the cops would gather on the other side of the road and people would scream and, you know, uh, it was a very eerie scene. Uh, trees and the river and the bridge where the cops didn't come across. So here the Hell's Angels came across and there was this big sign up there, uh, on the bridge, uh, saying, uh, Mary Franksters welcome the Hell's Angel. And these bastards pouring through, uh, into the place. And there was only one entrance across the bridge. And the cops were like eight or nine uh, stock cars up there, lights turning. Meanwhile, across the, the creek, uh, people were going utterly crazy. And then you put the Hell's Angel in that mix. You have 300 people naked, crazy, falling up and down, climbing the hill. And I, I thought that I, if I bring the angels, that I finally created the, the hell on earth, uh, the final. Uh, <laughs> and so I, uh, I saw it happening, and I, uh, I thought this kid, I don't know what I'm gonna do here. I had my son up in the car in the back seat, uh, sleeping. Uh, I thought a wonderful fate when the, when the cops got me for something. And Alan Ginsberg is, is chanting at the cops while they're asking me, uh, what I'm doing. And the cop, one of the cops said, is that, is that a child in the back? My God. And Ginsberg, meanwhile, is humming his chant, you know, I'm a little bit. Uh, it was like that. And it was a way, you know, it was an active scene. And, but he got, I thought I'd gone, I'd gone too far, so I went over to Easy and said, all right, never mind. You know, uh, I didn't tell him what the prognosis was for me and acid. I just said, give me some of that shit. We're about ready to, uh, I can't stand it anymore. And he said, yeah, sure. And, uh, he'd give me, uh, what was 850 mics at the time. That's what he said. <laughs> well, it, it wasn't, but, uh, yeah, there were street drugs and, uh, it was probably more like, uh, oh, maybe 300. It, uh, got a grip on me very quickly. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it was very, it was probably 400 breaths. It, uh, it tested, well, it put me in that realm, which is why acid is called, uh, reading acid is called Walking with the King, uh, where you lose control totally. You have no, uh, there is no more politics. Uh, if you have that dark bubble, uh, in your soul, it's gonna come up, and you cannot stop it. And, I didn't care at the time. I mean, everybody all around me was Sonny Parker and these wild bastards, uh, it didn't really do much, uh, we had a pretty good time. I don't know, it went on for a long time. And I, uh, what it did was take me to the, sort of the bottom of my, uh, whatever you call that thing down there. Soul, pit, mind, brain, uh, heart, uh, and I had a good time. I was not, uh, it, it, it freed me from, uh, a lot of things. Uh, I really thought I was a mean and violent person. I, I still am, I can be, and I enjoy it. And yeah, I'm good at it. But, uh, it is not what comes out of me. I learned that, that, uh, that it was not what came out of me when I lost control. And to give up that kind of control is very, uh, unusual. Because you do find out what you're going to do, uh, particularly in a, in a really bizarre situation where 
you're confronted with uh, every conceivable kind of uh, uh, stimuli. I'm being gentle here. Uh, but it, it, it's a very, uh, it's a, I, I, I uh, that was my most uh, memorable situation. How's that? Because it freed me from uh, knowing or thinking. I did think. I thought, uh, even though I was with these people all the time, and, uh, you know, uh, I was a dope fiend. But I uh, avoided acid because I was afraid of it. I was afraid that, uh, well, they told me that uh, I was weird. Not weird, but just, you know, like Sonny Parker. You know, uh, I don't know anything about the angels. That's, what I, that's why I ate the acid. I thought, oh my God, if I'm bad, these bastards are going to kill everybody here. <laughs> and uh, I don't want to be part of it. You know, that's why I said again, give me the acid. I'm going to help. It can't be any worse than what's going to happen here. <laughs> and, uh, he said, okay, yeah, good. Here, take this. And uh, since then, I've eaten a lot of acid, and I've never found that black bubble that uh, they told me about. Well, except that almost on a daily basis it comes around, but uh, I'm not afraid of it anymore. So that's a, that's a very, uh, that was the most memorable. How's that? Uh, at the risk of, uh, and I, I'm not an advocate of, uh, any kind of drug. Matter of fact, if anybody in the room has any drugs, I would prefer that you, I think it's better if you give them to me. And, uh, well, I, I'm a proven, uh, you know, I'm a doctor, and I, uh, I can handle it. And you, I, probably you can't. You should just say no. But, uh, I got credentials in this area. And, uh, it's a silly kind of thing. Uh, it's not bad. It's like, uh, the Salvation Army trip of some kind. Uh, with the war on drugs? Wasn't George Bush in charge of that? <laughs> yeah. Well, well, he dropped the price of cocaine about uh, 55% in uh, one year or two years. Uh, he cracked the marijuana uh, trade there. He raised, he raised the price of weed to uh, like, what, 250 an ounce? It's insane. It's like uh, cocaine now. Really? Oh, what are you booing about? I'm not selling it. <laughs> I had to cry him, I think. Uh, I used to buy weed for $15 an ounce. Uh, yeah, uh, George Bush was in charge of the war on drugs. And I think maybe Nancy Reagan assigned him to it. Uh, it's just uh, it's another PR thing. You know, it's like uh, inviting the Minnesota baseball team or something to the, the White House. What was that? Uh, it's just silly. It, it, I think the, uh, what, we don't, what we forget here, we we're going to find out pretty quickly, is that Reagan has been elected to two terms, and that means eight years, and only seven have passed so far. And there's one more. And All right, now, if it's a serious question, I'll tell you about that. No. 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 Okay. Well, uh, it's just a long story, of course, but it's, I guess, my favorite, favorite form. Uh, and when I was in California about uh, two years ago, and I tried everything for you, like uh, the sugar cubes are, well, they can't be about, you know, as good as, it, it really doesn't matter, it's all in these weird packaging. You never really know, but sugar cubes usually are made by people who really take care of it, and they're, you know, serious. But, uh, I was living in some cave uh, on the edge of the bay at Sausalito, and I was a night manager at the, uh, uh, Mitchell Brothers, uh, Porno Palace. <laughs> and, uh, I had a good time. I was, I was working on a book. And somehow I got, I had a, I had a, a call. I, I'm not sure how it happened. But I, uh, ended up, uh, with a, uh, meeting a girl, uh, who was representing somebody who didn't want to talk to me. And she brought me a present. Uh, it was like 6,000, uh, they weren't micro dots, which are very strong. These were 50 microgram pets of acid, little pills, not, not, not that stuff that melts. But a 50 micrograms, pure microgram, is a different kind of, uh, acid than your normal hit's gonna be a lot wilder. This is like a good hash, or a, a mushroom, or mescaline. The, you have to go down, you can split one of those. No, yeah, not really. But, uh, <laughs> It's a, it's a kind of acid that you can, uh, like I could be, I could have eaten one before you would, uh, know it, uh, or neither would I. <laughs> but it's a, that's my, uh, favorite kind of acid because it, it, it can be used, uh, and really enjoyed because it's a, 
the mice, if that's a, if they're under control now, you really want to have some fun with that. So of course, you go to the uh, little orange covers and the you know the red barrels and the uh, those purple pyramids. And things, you know, but uh, but uh, or you know, you think a jerky do, but all you have to do is some people say uh, pan a little longer to go home. And uh, yeah, if you want to really uh, see the whole place wrapped in a blaze of fire and all your heads, <laughs> there, uh, well, it's fun, you know. Uh, but you want to have the confidence. Uh, I see. I have, I have confidence in that. I, whatever happens with it, I think I know that. Well, I think I assume that I, you know, it could, you know, come back around. Maybe one day it won't, you know. Uh, but for yeah, for your, to answer your question, and it's an unusual kind of a uh, uh, hit. It's, it's small. It's a, it's a civilized uh, piece of mass. It's a lot of fun. And, uh, I don't. It's hard, it's hard to get them. It's hard to get. It's hard to find anybody who uh, who does that. And then, uh, what, all she told me was that the uh, the acid people in California, the manufacturers, were giving this to me as a as a gesture of appreciation for my work. <laughs> well, let me tell you, it's an elegant present. <laughs>